Well, thanks for being here, everybody. Um, this is a, kind of the first in a series, of, hopefully, of hangouts that we're going to be doing with folks who are using RevGo.org to support their missional adventures. And tonight we've got we've got Ryan and Henry with us who are both participating in a summer down at Project Transformation Dallas. Ryan and Henry, thanks for being here. Thank you, Carl. Um, actually, we're not in Dallas. We're in, Where are you? We're in Sherman, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, it's really good that we're having this uh, conversation so that I can be put straight. Well, just yeah. let me introduce myself. I'm Carl. Uh, I serve as a kind of a project lead on the RevGo program, but uh, up here in Detroit, we've got a house full of interns as well. Really a program that was inspired by Project Transformation, and uh, we're there doing a bunch of great stuff here in the city of Detroit. So, Ryan and Henry, tell us a little bit about how you found Project Transformation, and uh, what's the f uh, first half of the summer been like for you? All right. Uh, well, I'm Ryan Clements, um, and I'm from Hazel, Texas. And I actually found Project Transformation through a Google search. Um, it was winter break, and I was talking to some friends, and all of them had summer internships already. And so I did the panicked Google search for <laughs> summer internships, and I stumbled across um, SMU, um, Southern Methodist University's website, and they had Project Transformation listed as an opportunity and I did more research and the more research I did I realized that that's where I want, how I wanted to spend my summer. Henry, was it uh, kind of similar I, for Henry, you? Oh, what was that? Oh, was it kind of similar for you, Henry? Um, yeah, it was similar. It's kind of web-based. Um, I go to school at Truman State University in Missouri and I was looking for an internship this summer. I wanted to do something that was a little bit different from normal. I've had um, different internships and wanted something that's like more Christian based. Um, so I wanted to find something that's outside of Missouri, um, but also faith based. So I got kind of lucky. Um, I looked on my department homepage at my university, and some people have previously done project transformation. And I think my academic advisor like has some ties in SMU, so they kind of like knew a little bit about the program too. Um, so I had some people like set um, um, some opportunities ahead of me, and so the school kind of has a history with it, so I was able to kind of hear about it that way. Um, and yeah, been a pretty good experience so far. That's great. Um, Project Transformation is kind of a missional juggernaut, uh, particularly down in the southern regions. But for those who haven't heard about it, what do, what is PT, and uh, you know, how many people are you living with? What are you guys doing during the days? How are you living out this? this missional life this summer. All right. Um, well, we're actually in a unique position. Um, Project Transformation is mainly based in Dallas, Texas, but we have one satellite team, and both Henry and I are on the satellite team. That's about an hour north of Dallas. Um, and so on our team, we have 12 different people. Um, we have um, 10 or 11 interns and then a house pastor, and one of those interns is a site coordinator. Um, then we have three interns working with youth, and we have seven working with um, elementary. But what we mainly do is um, we run a type of day camp for students, um, for kids and uh, youth. And these are kids that need, that don't receive um, the kind of attention and relationship care that they need. And so what we try to, we, the simple answer is we run a day camp, but <laughs> um, it's a lot more than that. We try to form intentional relationships with the kids, um, try to get to know them, try to let them have fun and just be kids and enjoy their summer, but provide educational opportunities along the way. What's your home base of operations? Are you guys in a local church? Yes. Um, we are um, project transformation, it's all about the three C's, um, churches, communities, and children. And so um, a big part of it is connecting churches with their local communities. And so we host our, our program at a site church that is provides almost all of everything that we have. And we would not be able to do what we do without our site church. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit more about the community in which you're serving, that second C there. Um, what, is the, what is the makeup of the community? Who, what kind of kids? Who are the kids that you're working with? You are. Yeah, um, 
The community that we reach out to is different from what the Dallas people do. Um, they're like more urban since we're working actual in Dallas. And ours is really unique because we're working in Sherman, Denison area, uh, which, you know, it's still a bigger community. It's got like 70,000 people. So it's not like some really small town, but it's still a different dynamic. And what this um, program helps teach is that there are people that all, all over America that have problems and like need help out in different ways. Um, beyond just urban communities. Um, there's people that need everywhere. Um, so this program helps us out to reach out to a different group of people rather than just urban Dallas. And uh, most of our children and youth qualify for the free and reduced lunch program um, in the public school system. Um, and so we pr provide them with meals from the food bank. And some of these kids, these are the only meals they get during the day. Um, so well, on the weekends, we try to send them home with a sack, sacks of food so that they have food over the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of these kids come from single parent homes um, or are living with grandparents and um, are behind academically um, in one way or another. We make a mistake to think that the folks who are in need are always in the urban centers, um, that all around people are suffering from the effects of poverty and other things in their community, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell, uh, tell us a little bit about um, the interactions between you and the other folks that you're working with there, the, the dozen or so, and, um, and, and your, uh, you have a site director and a house pastor? Yes. How does that all work together? Because I think people, you know, they've had summer jobs before, but um, maybe they haven't done it in the context of a bunch of, you know, real world for Jesus kind of setting. Yeah, um, this this internship has definitely been more more interesting than my past internships um, because we actually all live together. I've never um, had that type of experience. So um, one part of that is that the job never really ends, um, which is sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing, <laughs> but um, mostly a good thing. So. One of the exciting things about that is, though, it's always, always all about the kids. Um, we're there with them at site, and then we come back, we share stories. And that's one of my favorite parts, is to be able to sit down with my fellow coworkers and say, well, did you hear what so-and-so did today? And, or did you see what so-and-so, how they helped out this other child? And so for me, that's one of the most rewarding parts, is because the living, together, living with your coworkers, in some way the job doesn't end, but that's a rewarding experience just because of the nature of our mission. Um, and it's also helped me personally grow, I feel, a lot, because you can't escape, <laughs> um, especially here in Sherman. And so um, it's helped me grow a lot and to understand other people um, who are sometimes very different than you. Um, we have a very diverse team, and I love it. Um, we're all very different, and we all have our own unique gifts and talents that we bring to the table. So Henry, by, uh, by about week five or six here in Detroit, there's always something that uh, either the house decides they're, they're not going to deal with and they're just going to tough it out for the next four weeks, or there becomes a storm moment, you know, this moment where we really have to sit down and, and ask ourselves, how are we going to do this in a way that's more kind of full of grace? Um, <laughs> Not asking you to divulge your, everybody's dirty laundry, but have there been those challenging moments to the summer as well? We heard before coming here that the sixth week was the worst week or like the week where tensions boil over, but I feel like our group has been pretty open about sometimes when there's tensions. Um, back in the third week, there are some tensions between people, and that settled a lot of stuff, and we know that there's some disagreements between people, but I feel like from the third week experience, that's kind of like helped us to kind of keep moving forward and deal with stuff. And I think pretty much, I don't think any of us was too overly stressed today, even though we had a tough day. But I feel like we're, you know, we're not like falling downhill right now since this goes to the end, but we're also steadily walking down the mountain, if that's the way to put it. <laughs> sure. Um, we both, we all have a pretty good hold of it so far. Um, working in the youth area. Um, I'm not in the elementary, and neither is Ryan, but from what we see, they seem to be doing okay too. Um, yeah, I think that the six-week thing could be a factor, but I think that we've kind of been experiencing some tension all year that maybe helps us out sometimes. Sure. Not just reserved until the six-week and blowing over. I think part of the reason um, that 
we resolve tension so well within our team is um, partly because we do have a house pastor position. Mm -hmm. um, so project transformation supplies a person that is specifically meant to be there to help resolve conflict um, and to get to know interns and to be our support while we are supporting the children. And that has really helped me a lot. Um, I love our house pastor. Um, she's great. I can, I feel like I can talk to her about anything, whether it's going out just to get a sonic tree played at night or if there is tension in the team. Um, she's great at dealing with conflict resolution. And so I feel like um, the way Project Transformation is structured by having that position really does um, cut down on a lot of the team tension and allows us to function better and to serve the kids a lot better. Yeah. And is the house pastor somebody who's connected uh, seminary bound or in seminary now or something like that? Uh, no, it, the house pastor positions are usually past interns. Okay. Um, and our house pastor is actually just a recent um, psychology graduate from undergrad. Sure. So there's ways that even after your summer you can come back be uh, participating again in a mm -hmm. new kind of way. Yeah, and um, by having the alumni come back and serve as house pastors, um, it helps because they've been there. They know what you're doing, the experiences that you're having, and they can help you work through those. Yeah. So one part of RevGo is all about um, being an engagement platform, a place where you can tell your stories and um, people can support you with gifts and prayers and in-kind donations and volunteer hours and things. Who's been the uh, who's been the standout supporter for you both this summer? Somebody that's just really made things possible um, through encouragement or gifts or time. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> um, there's some uh, nice woman named Miss Joan. I don't know too much about her. Um, some of our other interns go to the church where she attends and is a member, and they've been talking to her and working with her more than I have. But I've seen. Her, she's invited us to her house, provided us with dinner, um, had volunteers, supplies of food. She's donated um, a good, a generous amount to the program to try to get the kids to go to the zoo, and, and she also provided root beer floats for a mystery activity we had. So she's been really adamant about supporting the program and is vocal in her support for us too, which has been really helpful. The church itself has also been really helpful too. Um, whenever we need anything, they're always there to provide. They asked us to provide a wish list if we need anything that they'd go out to get for us. Um, if we have any problems with the site, there was there to help us, whether it's getting new keys or finding trash bags. Um, and yeah, they've just been there to support us. Even though they have their own jobs working in the office and supporting their church, they're taking the time to work with us too. Kind of above and beyond. Very cool. Is there something that stands out in your mind, Ryan? Um, I'd say for me, along with everyone that Henry just mentioned, but um, for me especially, it would be my family. and. It's been really encouraging because it has, it's been not just my immediate family, but also my extended family has really um, supported me, encouraged me, what I'm doing and in all different ways, whether it's my mom um, sending me little encouraging text messages in the morning for me to wake up to, um, to get me through that last half of the week, <laughs> or um, my aunt and uncle have donated generously um, financially. I've had extended family members asking about how they could come volunteer or serve food. Um, and so for me, just my family response um, of me doing this internship, which has been very different than past internships I've done, has been really encouraging to me. That's great. Um, we just have seen over and over again how young people like yourselves serving and, and things like this can become this, just this engine of inspiration. You know, people get jazzed by saying, they're going to do what and doing it where, you know, and then all of a sudden uh, people are coming to visit and catching the same vision that you're catching um, through that immediate service. Um, well, that's great, guys. Uh, as, we, um, as we're moving on, w where are some places that people can find some more stories from you? Obviously, Ryan, you're, you're up on RevGo. Henry, are you there yet? Am I what? Are you up on RevGo.org yet? <laughs> I'm not very technological. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Um, well, this, it's a great option for, for folks that are serving in, in uh, places like you are. So um, visit that sign-up page, and you can find um, Ryan's page. I think that we've got new clean URLs now, so I think it's probably just ryan Clements at revgo.org. All right. <laughs> find that. Um, are there other places that uh, your house or uh, the rest of the PT interns are telling their story about the summers? 
that we can find? Um, I think there on the website, um, on the Project Transformation website, that's projecttransformation.org um, backslash Dallas. Um, I think there might be um, some blog posts that are being posted, and that's just not from Sherman, but also in the Dallas. Also. Okay, great. As people are moving back into school, um, what's the time frame that they should be looking to connect with places like Project Transformation? What, what's the um, application time frame like? Um, I think the deadline was in January. Yeah, it's really early. early. Mid-January. And um, I found that's common for most internships like this. Mm -hmm. um, I was also looking at a thing for Teach for America, um, and they had an early deadline. Um, I was looking at internships with different churches, and they usually have um, January, early January or mid-January deadlines. So um, use the fall for discernment and then be ready to jump on it right after... Most definitely. Right uh, you definitely see um, summer internship postings up here, I'd say around October and definitely in, into November. Great. And any last piece of wisdom that you would uh, bestow yeah. upon others who are doing similar things to you all across the country and really across the world? Um, I'd say just go for it. <laughs> if there's something that you may be hesitant towards or unsure of, just go for it. Um, you never know where God will take you and what experiences you will have. Yeah. Yeah, mine's similar. I was thinking, like, if you have an urge to do something, you should definitely check it out and look into it. Um, you know, the decisions to, like, what you want to do in the summer could be a big thing because they can affect you and other people you work with. So, you know, it's... It's never too early to think about applying for internships and during the summer and this fall semester. And yeah, you just gotta, if you feel like maybe you might want to do something like that, you just gotta look into it and do it. Well, Ryan, Henry, thanks so much for being with us tonight. You can find more uh, at revgo.org. You can also like us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash revgoumc, and we're the same on Twitter as well. So any of those ways that you're getting feeds of uh, links and stories, um, please follow us and watch for more updates about folks like Ryan and Henry all across the United Methodist Connection. Uh, RevGo is designed to be the platform that uh, anybody connected uh, in any of these kind of programs that engage young people in missional adventure um, can, can use to engage support and tell their story and uh, that we can use as a way to recruit next year's classes. So thanks guys uh, and uh, peace on the uh, last few weeks of your summer. All right, thank you Carl. Thank you. All right, good night. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.